Bullet Club. Hello everybody, this is Tox Fale, the Road General, and you're listening in to the number one podcast in all of Hawaii, the Casanova Podcast. Too sweet. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Hawaii's number one podcast for entertainment and more, the Casanova Podcast. I'm your host, Mikhail Falatea, a.k.a. Mikhail Casanova. And today, we're joined by a very, very phenomenal guest, the one, the only, the rogue general, Tokes Fale, a.k.a. Bad Luck Fale. <laughs> Man, how you doing today? <laughs> oh, good. Thanks for having me, Mikhail. Uh, and hello to everyone out there in Hawaii. I miss you guys. I miss Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, we got to have you back out here. Uh, man, it is, it is, um, it's an honor to have you on the show. And and honestly, look, I, I know we were saying before we started recording, like, you know, most wrestling podcasts have talked about the, the Meltzer ratings and everything else like that. But I'm like, I want to talk about everything you're doing from Fale Kava to the Fale Dojo and everything <laughs> you're doing for your community. So, man, go ahead. Like, let, let's talk about it. Like, how, what, what, what made you... Uh, you know, want to, to start Fale Kava, like, because I, I love Kava, but like... Oh, what... man. <laughs> For those of you that don't know about Kava, Kava is a traditional uh, Polynesian drink that uh, uh, mostly old men, <laughs> old men <laughs> drink when they want to relax and socialize. But uh, in recent years, it's become a, a mainstream and a lot of the youth and the younger people are getting into it. But uh, why did I get into it? it actually, it's actually quite funny because I was in Hawaii uh, over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was never a cover drinker. I had some here and there throughout the years. But uh, I was over in Maui and my nephews were big cover drinkers. And they invited me to one of the um, cover bars and I had a... I had a drink of kava there, and it just blew my mind because the way that they uh, made it over there was just different. And yeah. when I had some, it just it changed my life because I was a heavy drinker before that. And then now, because it's changed my life and it's gotten me off the alcohol, I still drink here and there, but it's gotten me off mostly. Uh, I just, So I believe it, believe it so much, I wanted to invest in it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And yeah, um, I, I I think I hit you up. What was it a couple of weeks ago? Maybe a couple of months ago. I was like, man, I need to get some of that Fale Kava because like, <laughs> like I, I keep seeing you post about it, and then some other folks I know like that's in New Zealand. They're like, man, it's so good. I'm like, I, I gotta get it. <laughs> I'm like Toko, I gotta get it. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've shared it. I've shared it with a lot of uh, the youth and, and a lot of people here. The main thing I get. Oh, the main comments I get is it makes them feel romantic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so the ladies love it, huh? <laughs> oh, now I know why all these uh, Tongans, these old Tongan guys drink it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, man, I'm, I'm definitely. Uh, I, I'm. Um, are your shirts for sale too? Because man, I need to order. I well, I'm working on those. Uh, working on getting it online, but uh, oh. yeah, still the design. I'm still working on the design, uh, but it'll be up soon. Yeah, as, as soon as you do, man. Just let me know. I, I'll, I'll start promoting <laughs> in on everything, man. Um, for sure, for sure. Yeah, but okay. So you know, you came out here, Maui. Uh, you you. Got to try the the, the kava is super good. What else did you get to do while you were out here? No man, because uh, uh, my family is from uh, Lahaina, oh. and when I yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. When I when I first tried the kava, it was at a, a kava by Lahaina, mm-hmm. and then the second time I came out was after all the fires, so yeah. they had lost. You know there was nowhere to drink kava, but then I ended up going to uh, 
Key Hank, mm -hmm. where the original cover bar started, and then and then they opened the one in in um, Lahina. So, Hale 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 Hale, I think is the name of the cover bar. But mm -hmm. when I discovered the cover, that's where I was every day. So before that, I would you know go out and do the touristy stuff and and all that in uh, Maui. But when I discovered the cover. I was at that bar every single day. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, that, definitely. Uh, the next time I go to Maui, uh, I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna try out some of the spots they go over there. Cause I, I want to say the last time I went to Maui, well, last time I was supposed to go to Maui was actually right before uh, the Lahaina fires. Cause my my two oldest daughters, uh, they're ten and eleven. And they were there with uh, their mom, well, my ex-wife. They were with her, her family. And for two weeks while they were there, uh, during that, that, well, two weeks during the whole behind the fire thing, they were missing. So, like, that oh, that, that was so crazy, man. And it was, it was interesting how, like, with the Lahaina fires, we had so much of the media, like, from the world, we're talking about it. And then, like, a week later, it was just, like, silence and and so everything i was trying to do like leveraging you know social media and, and this podcast and everything to keep the awareness there and because a lot of people think that okay once this is out of the news the problems go away and it's like no it's no. i mean there's still like some of the um one of the things i do out here is i'm a mentor for game has hawaii which has a lot of Samoan, Tongan, and hawaiian kids in it and uh, a lot of them are, you know, they, they've been affected by it. And when they try to, they're, they're trying to get their stories out uh, with their video games and, and letting people know that, hey, you know, it didn't just go away just because it's not in the media, you know. And so it, it's just crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a sad story. My sister lost, and her husband lost their house. Um but, uh, you know, it's not gone away. You know, everybody's forgotten about it, but they still don't have a house. Right. And they're still trying to struggle and, I mean, still struggling, trying to figure out how to move on from that. Yeah. Um, so, so other than that, man, um, Fale Dojo, what was the inspiration for it? Inspiration? I was, I was a troubled youth, uh, like a lot of the, the youth in the South of Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, mm -hmm. I was one of the fortunate guys who got out and got to Japan and played rugby and then got into wrestling. Mm -hmm. But uh, being in Japan and especially the wrestling, uh, I learned uh, the discipline and the, the manners and the respect side of things. And I thought, you know, this would really go down well in New Zealand, especially in South Auckland. Mm -hmm. uh, would, I thought it would help a lot of the youth um, figure out who they are and what they want to do and what direction they want to go. So that was the main uh, main reason behind it. And at the same time, uh, I had a lot of friends who were uh, getting into these rugby teams but weren't making it to the top. But a lot of them were, were let go before they even made, made enough money or a lot of them were cut because they weren't good enough. Uh, and I wanted to target those type of um, uh, athletes because in, in, the, in South Auckland because there's a lot of them who mm -hmm. get picked up from high school, but when they get into the squad, they're just kept around until they're not being used or they've had enough of them. So a lot of those guys end up with depression, and a lot of them, unfortunately, end up taking their own lives. And I thought this is another pathway if I can pick up those guys who have already learned how to train, learned how to be pros, learned how to uh, uh, build their bodies, and just show them there's another way to make money and stay in the limelight and mm -hmm. and go all the way with their talents. And the dojo's a uh, perfect place to do that. Nice. I'm seeing because you're, you're in the dojo right now. Like, how, how big is it in... You know, what are like the usual hours if, if people were interested in, in going over? Yeah, we, I'd say it, uh, it's a two-story building and uh, we can fit at least two two rings downstairs. 
we do the boxing here downstairs mm -hmm. and the uh, wrestling downstairs and then upstairs we have a, a bigger space for uh with the weights weights and uh we do a lot of crossfit stuff upstairs but it's pretty big and uh, we do boxing kickboxing we do grappling and recently we've just added strongman training uh nice. the space is big and it's getting popular especially uh our wrestling is already known all over the world but Mm -hmm. Our boxers are starting to blow up. Uh, boxing is becoming um, popular again over here. So a lot of kids are coming through, a lot of young kids. Nice. Nice. Yeah, and, and I love the fact that, like, you're working with the youth and, and giving them alternatives because, you know, like, even myself, you know, so I'm an untongued Hawaiian kid. Like, I, I was a <laughs> – I keep my mom <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, like it, it's, you know, and, and it, it's very important to, you know, especially trouble youth have some type of outlet that they can have discipline on it, uh, discipline for themselves and, and somewhere to guide that, that energy they have, that focus. And, and I love, I, I've seen, you know, your posts about it, uh, the, the stuff you're doing with the community out there, man, it is, it is fucking incredible. I, I <laughs> Toko, like I, I, I appreciate everything you're doing, you know, for the community there, for our people. It, it means a lot, man. Man, I, I gotta say, that also, um, I'm sure you know uh, some of the guys I worked with in Japan. A lot of them are over, obviously, over in uh, AEW and over in WWE. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, everybody asked, always asked me, oh, why, why don't you go? Uh, the honest truth is. You know, I've, I've wrestled for all these years in a big company. But to me, I would love to go there one day. But the truth is I'm not fulfilled in my heart. Uh, I, I can do that and, and get the fame and make the money. But there's always something missing. And I found that when I started the dojo and when I started helping people and helping the community, that's when I started to feel the fulfillment. Yeah. And to me... There's a, a bigger calling than just being famous and making money. And that's why, that's why I get involved in a lot of these things, which is hard. It's harder than wrestling, trying to help people and trying to show them a, a better way of life and get them out of off the streets or, or get them in a, in a healthier buzz or whatever. But that's way more fulfilling for me. So I'd, I'd give it up all just to... To keep doing what I'm doing right now. I mean, you know, the dirt sheets are always saying, who's going to join the bloodline next? No. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I, even I, for a minute, I was like, <laughs> okay, so Tama Tonga left, Tonga Loa left, Hikuleo left. Like, is the Rogue General going next? I, I'm like, I don't know. But I, I definitely. <laughs> let's, let's just say. Let's just say no. We'll, let's just wait and see. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so, so you know, I gotta ask this question. I gotta ask this question. Who do you acknowledge as the tribal chief? Who do I acknowledge? Yes. I acknowledge Haku. <laughs> That's great, Haku. Yes. Yes. That's the tribal chief now. <laughs> I believe he's the tribal chief since the wild Samoans are gone. Who's yeah. next in line? I believe the yeah. next in line should be King Haku. Yeah. And, dude, I, I definitely want to say, like, you know, even though you are the rogue general, you got the rogue army, one of the most badass wrestlers <laughs> in the industry, you are every bit humble. And just, oh, I, I love it. And a lot of people, and I feel like a lot of people know a lot about, you know, Hawaiians and Samoans. They don't really know a lot about us Tongans. And, and, and honestly, we're very humble people. Like, you're super oh. humble. You know, oh. I'm like, that's, that's... I'm over here like, are you going to come through the screen and just like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing, uh, you're, you're totally right about that. Um, and everybody talks about the, you know, the Polynesians who's been through wrestling, you know, the scariest motherfuckers out there, but you meet every single one of them will be the nicest guy ever. 
And that's the thing about us uh, Polynesians. And I say, especially Tongans, uh, we weren't named or given the nickname the Friendly Islands for no reason. Uh, we are always uh, happy and we're always uh, kind until, yes. until you push us too far. And then you'll find out that the nicest people are the scariest people. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it, it was so uh, trippy when I went, because uh, this is my first tattoo, and I got it done traditional um, at um, Soul Signature out here by um, Le Petty and uh, Sua Sua Lope. And it was so oh, trippy wow. uh, that one time when, like, Great Haku just popped in, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like and, and it, it's you know he, he's super humble super down to earth and yeah, yeah it's you know people you I, know I, a, I, a funny story about him not a story but you gotta realize he's known as the scariest man in wrestling right yes but if you if you if you've read a lot of uh, the wrestling biographies, a lot of these legends, every single book will mention Haku as the nicest guy, who's either helped them out or just you know been there for them. But it's it's evident that the, the nicest people are the scariest, and I think yeah. especially uh, the Islanders, you can see it in the in the UFC as well. You yeah. know, a lot of Mark Hunt and a lot of these guys were really nice people. But if we have, if our job is to be scary, you're going to yeah. be scared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so I want to ask you also, like, what, um, you know, you've been in New Japan Pro Wrestling for for a long time now. You've been with the Bullet Club, you are one of the founding members of the Bullet Club. Are you going to take over at some point? Um, you know, the Rogue General running <laughs> Bullet Club? I mean, it just, I, I'm wondering. It, it would be nice. It would be nice to have a fellow tongue in running, you know. Mm. Uh, I was never about being the leader. You know, I, was, I, 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 had, I had more fun being behind the scenes. Right, and uh, you know the whole reason I came up with uh, the underboss mm-hmm. is in any organization, the underboss is the one who actually does all the work and actually enforces the rules and all that kind of stuff. So for me, it was more fun doing that than being the face or being the leader because you know when things come down come down to it, who are they going to get rid of first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's. You know, it's a, it's a, it's it's good to be in the front. It's good to be the leader, but you really gotta be strong, smart, and also a good politician. Because if not, <laughs> it, it, it is so true. Because you know, it, you know, when I when I talk to, um, and I'll use this as an example. So when I talk to other content creators and influencers, they always talk about, oh, I got this type of pool and this and this. And I'm like, no, you don't. If you're talking about it, you don't have that type of pool. The scariest people are the ones you don't know that have power. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. You go into any room, and I've learned this in, from being in Japan and from being in New Japan. And when you go in the locker room, be aware of the ones who are just sitting there watching everything. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones you need to be respectful to. You get a lot of guys come out there, blah, 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 I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I've how many, how many matches, I've been in here for years, and you just nod, and, oh, good for you, good for you. I watch for the guys who are quiet, doing their own things, and there you see everything. <laughs> so. Um, what are your thoughts on, um, you know, your family, uh, Tama Tonga and Tangaloa going over to, uh, WWE? Are you happy with how they're being, uh, portrayed and presented? Cause me personally, I kind of thought we were going to get, you know, G O D cause I mean, one killer theme, 
I I missed the gun stun that Tom Matanga used to do. I know because it's so similar to uh, Randy Orton's RKO. Maybe that's not why he's not doing it. Uh, I think Damian Priest, uh, he said on um, Chris Van Vliet's show that he kind of switched doing his move when Cody came in. But uh, how, how do you feel about their presentation there so far? I'm, I'm very happy that they went there. Um, I, I know uh, there's, there was some problems in Japan. And this is why I don't like being in the front because there's always other people trying to be that one in the spot. And I believe Tamatonga should have been right in the front. He should have been one of the top guys in New Japan. But for years, he has passed over, you know, and I'm happy he's gone somewhere else and try to pursue that. But at the same time, if you're saying, if you're telling me that it looks like the same thing might be happening over there, then, you know, there's something he has to try and figure out again over there. But I believe he's an a underrated wrestler that needs to be up there, especially if, as a team, two of the top, probably the best tag team in the world in my in my eyes. But if they're not given the opportunity to be that, then I don't know what why why that is. I do know, you know, they were the top in Japan for years. Yeah. So they might have been, you know, they might have gotten bored of just being on top, which is yeah. why they've, uh, you know, they may have gone over there to try and, you know, put more excitement in what they're doing. But in, as a singles wrestler, I, I really do see Tamatonga as one of the top guys in the world. Yeah. Underrated, very underrated <clears throat> guy. Yeah, and, and it's one of the interesting things where, like, I've, you know, I, I, I try to stay away from dirt sheets because I have a lot of respect for the business. And, and to me, it's like, if you're if if you're not in the business, you're fucking Mark. You know, <laughs> just just accept that reality. Watch the show and enjoy it versus, yeah. oh, this is how this should be booked and this. There's a reason you're not booking it. <laughs> no. But I, I've seen a I've seen a lot of of, of the the Mark journalists and podcasts and and the fans, which I say there's a difference. And I said this to Chris uh, Van Lee. He's one of my uh, friends friends of the show. Uh, I said you know to him that there is a difference between you know wrestling fans and WWE fans. Like that <laughs> that's a whole different and. And he, he completely agreed with me. And, and I've said this to other people, and a lot of other people don't get that. But I'm like, there is a stark difference between them. Because WWE fans are only used to whatever you see or you've been seeing for, like, what, the last 20, 30-some-plus years. Whereas there are all there have always been alternatives. But they think all there is is WWE. Now they know about, you know, TNA they, or, um, yeah, TNA Impact. They know about... AEW, they know about New Japan because of how like wrestling is becoming cool again, or it has become cool again. Uh, mm. Because in many ways, WWE kind of ran into the ground when they were the monopoly. But a lot of them I've seen complain about, you know, oh, what's the hype behind Tom Tonga? You know, what's the hype behind Tonga Law? And I'm like, if you don't know jack shit about those two you can't talk at all these are the two of the most badass motherfuckers on the planet what are you like what like and, and i've seen some say like they don't think tama can talk i'm like tama can cut a fucking promo just get just like what what sorry i, I i'm venting because like <laughs> Like I'm a fan of wrestling. I'm a fan of you. I'm a fan of, of the Gorillas of Destiny and and Hikaleo and all of them. And like I know how good the Gorillas of Destiny are. And it's just frustrating seeing the WWE fans, uh, for the most part, not get it. And the the Mark journalists and podcasters, you know, oh well, this is why and, and this and oh, did you see this botch? And it's like get your ass in the ring and try to do any of this. <laughs> you know? oh man it's just how, how do you feel about that like the the 
the the the journal the wrestling journalism podcast for the most part i mean chris is cool i i love chris but like how do you feel about a lot of them uh, i i get what you're saying um my viewpoint on on that those type of fans is fans are fans right yeah. i can't i can't complain because you know i really do believe that Fans paying or buying tickets, mm. fuck, we don't get paid. So, yeah. if if I were to go to to that place, I'd shut the fuck up and take all the abuse that's thrown at me. You know why? Because I'm getting paid by these people. And for me, I, I like a challenge also. So if if nobody knows me, I'm gonna do my freaking best to try and earn that respect, earn that. Mm-hmm. And, and if that means starting from the bottom and just shutting the fuck up and following somebody around, I'll, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I did that in New Japan. <laughs> and I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it depends on the wrestler, man, if, if they get butt hurt because some fans were talking shit to them, then, you know, that's on them. But if you're there to do a job, if my job is to stand in the background and look tough and and smash everybody. That's my job. Whatever the fans say, if they say, oh, you can't wrestle, which I get all the time, oh, you're the worst wrestler ever. I know, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I'm not wrestling, you dumbass. I'm in there, and I don't take bumps. All right? And I, and I just strike, do strikes and, and stumps, and that's my fucking job. Right? <laughs> I get paid a lot of money to do that. Why the fuck will I go in there and bump a hundred times yeah. and still get paid the same amount of money? So if they tell me to do this, I'm going to do that. And if the fans complain, I'll say thank you very much for your pay and your money <laughs> and buying my merch. I guess, <laughs> yes, I am the one bump general and I can't wrestle, but thank you for paying me. That's... <laughs> <laughs> That's how it should be. <laughs> Man, it's <laughs> okay, and and you're you're so right because it's like it, it's funny. So I, I also I've got some wrestling training background. Like I I tried out for WWE. I want to say twelve years ago, and then yeah. whenever the last tough enough was, and I I did well. But I couldn't, I couldn't fully go through with it because at the time I ended up getting sick, uh, the 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 last time, and I ended up I got cancer. I got stage three caloric oh, cancer. Wow. Um, then the doctors told me they're like, "Hey, you got like seven eight months left to live." Yeah. And then I I just started like just trying to do everything I can to give back and help other people. And then you know, by grace of God or, or whatever universe however it happened you know i started responding to the treatments and cancer went away so you know i understand i I said all that to say basically when i was training for wrestling those bumps hurt and people think like oh you you gotta take bumps you gotta do all the flips and all this like no that's why we have weight classes that's why there are different styles of wrestling not not everyone's going to come off an assembly line doing the same type of stuff. Like I like Will Ospreay, but I'm not going to say everybody needs to do Will Ospreay's moveset, you know, like that's him or, or Ricochet stuff. Like that's him. Not everybody is going to do that. And if you want mm-hmm. everybody to take bumps, why? If you're getting, you're getting paid a bunch of money to just beat the shit out of people and look cool. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> So. A lot of a lot of guys don't want to do that. <laughs> a lot of guys would rather do those uh, hundred bumps and and cry about what the fans are saying. <laughs> a lot of guys do. Did, did, did I get five stars? Who fucking cares? Are you getting paid? <laughs> That's what matters. Get get paid. We That's got it. bills to pay. <laughs> That's, it. That's the honest oh. truth. You know? Oh, man. How, how do you feel about, um, so, like, you know, a lot of, I, I see a lot of people say, like, you know, getting the championship, 
is like the pinnacle, but do you feel that a title makes you or it complements? Uh, you know the saying, it's not the belt that makes the man, it's the man that makes the belt, right? That's, to me, that's the truth. It's it's real. You know, if, if somebody puts a belt on you, you know, you got to you gotta match that uh, that level. You got to rise to that level. Yeah. But if somebody puts the belt or belt on you and you're not at that level, what are they going to do? They're going to take their freaking thing off you and tie you fuck off. Yeah. And a lot of people think <clears throat> it's the belt, it's the belt, it's the belt. Man, I've seen it so many times. People get the belt once they lose it. They're like, oh, they talk about, I want the belt, I want the belt, I want the belt. No, nah, man. Once you get that belt, you get, you're at that level. And what they want to see when they take that belt off you is you stay at that level. That's what they want. Mm-hmm. All right. The belt doesn't bring you from here to here. You bring yourself from here to here. And Mm -hmm. if if the belt is here and you bring yourself to here where the belt is, when that belt disappears, you stay there. A lot of people don't understand that. They go chasing after the belt. Like for me, right? I got Mm -hmm. a belt and my pay went up. When I lost that belt, my pay stayed the way it was. Right? I didn't go complaining about, can I get the belt again? Why? Because you have to do more main events. A lot of touring, a lot more matches for the same amount of money, mm-hmm. right? You gotta be dumb if you're like, oh, I wanna. You gotta be really special up here and really tough. And a lot of guys do have that. I knew I didn't. You know, I, I knew I got myself to that level, and then I'm gonna. Hey, if you wanna take the belt, take the belt. I'm already <laughs> happy. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, um, so I, I definitely want to ask you, like, how many times have you had to give somebody a receipt? And and when you gave them a receipt, was it because look, we tongans, we don't know how to be gentle when we hit somebody. <laughs> so, how bad was well, How badly did you give somebody a receipt? Like, did you just knock them the fuck out? Or did you just like give him a little <laughs> tap? <laughs> no, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm very respectful and very uh, professional. And a lot of the times, uh, I've given a lot of receipts, but a lot of those times are mainly because the other person is inexperienced, mm-hmm. or it was a, it was a mistake, you know. But um, if you if you look at me in real life, uh, I'm look I look big, but in real life you're gonna be more shocked because I'm a, I'm a really big guy. And when I'm in the ring with you, a lot of guys would think twice before they would do something stupid like that. Because I'm not going to hit you. I'm going to put you on the floor and I'm going to stand on you. And I'm very heavy. And I'm going to stand on you until you can't breathe. (laughs) 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 And we call that the tongue and massage. (laughs) 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 Oh, man. When when uh when's the next time you think you're gonna be out here in uh, Hawaii? Ooh, hopefully later on this year because uh, I try and go once a year. Uh, if mm-hmm. I can go more times, uh, I would. But uh, before the Lahaina thing, I had somewhere to go, but and and I would come all often. But uh, since my my sister has lost her house, it's uh, harder for me to come down. But I'm hoping later on this year I could come down. Maybe uh. Next time I do come down, we can catch up for a cover. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you um, ever uh, come over here to Oahu, uh, just let me know. I'll take care of you. Uh, oh, cool. You know, cool. Oh, wow. this, uh, yeah, that's where we land. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, one other thing I, I do want to ask you, because I want to be respectful of your time. I know you're very, very busy. Um, so your tattoos, uh, what was the worst... What which one hurt the most? This one, these ones. Yeah. See, see, I want to get that, but I know I got to shave this off, and I'm like, I don't want to do it yet. <laughs> no, but... keep your hair, keep your <laughs> hair. Because <laughs> when you lose that, oh man, you're gonna miss it. 
Because I had dreads. I used to have dreads. I just yeah. used to have dreadlocks uh, when I was younger. And when, when, you know, I lost my hair when I got into the New Japan Dojo. Oh. Um, yeah, it was so stressful. It was so tough, the training. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just the lifestyle that uh, they have a tradition. When you first enter the dojo as a young lion, mm-hmm. the tradition is you have to shave your head. And it's it, they've done that ever since the beginning. So I, I didn't mind. I was like, fuck, this is tradition. I'm going to do it. So I did it. Mm-hmm. And my hair never, this area here never grew back because I was so stressed. It was the toughest training you could ever do. So, <laughs> so, so does does any of that go over to like do the students of the the Fale Dojo? Do they get like a taste of that, or, or, oh, or yes, yes. are they doing? No, that? they get a lot of it. Uh, I'd say I, I try and give it a hundred percent, but mm-hmm. not many of them uh, uh, survive. A lot of these guys they can't handle the training and the the, re- the actual lifestyle of of what it takes to become a, a wrestler. And a lot of them quit. And a lot of them leave and complain online. But I don't give a fuck. No. <laughs> hey, hey, as you always this is say, not for everyone. fuck them. <laughs> yeah, fuck them. You know, I try and help everyone who comes here and everyone who, takes, who, who steps foot in this dojo, I, I try and give them exactly what Japan gave me when I started. And if you can't handle it, then hey, you can't be at the level of, of professional wrestling. Yeah, that's true, man. So, uh, with that being said, uh, as we wrap up, um, Fale Kava, where can people get it and tell them why it's the best damn Kava in the world? <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's only available in New Zealand. If you're listening from New Zealand, hit me up on uh, Instagram or Facebook, Fale Kava. I'm um, still working on uh, trying to get it national, international, I mean. Uh, but if you want to try it in Hawaii, there's a couple of cover bars around who, in, in Maui, and I think Oahu's got one as well. But uh, try it out. It's life-changing. It's gotten me off the alcohol, uh, the habit of drinking a lot. But uh, it's a life-changing drink. So enjoy it. Awesome, awesome. And then, man, anything you want to promote before you go or, uh, you know, just, just go ahead. The floor is yours, man. <laughs> just uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and uh, uh, TikTok uh, at Talks Folly. At okay. Talks Folly. But uh, thank you, Mikael, for the, the uh, inviting me on this. Uh, I enjoy it, and I hope hope to do it again with you. Yeah, it would be an absolute honor to have you on the show again. And uh, with that being said, people, we got the Rogue General here. Don't fuck with them. If you do, you get that tongue in massage. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoy this episode of the podcast or any of the other episodes that we've done so far, if you've enjoyed any of the conversations I've had with the guests that I've had on the show or just general topics that you guys have thrown at me or that I've researched and we've just talked about on the show, then do me a solid. If you're listening on any of the major podcasting outlets, make sure you leave a comment, you know, leave a rating or review because it greatly helps out the show. If you're watching the show on YouTube, which airs every single week, then make sure you sub to the channel, youtube.com slash at Mikhail Casanova or just youtube.com slash Mikhail Casanova or even do us an even bigger solid by liking the video and sharing it with someone you think would find some enjoyment out of it and all that being said i hope you guys continue to enjoy this podcast and the content we put out here because hey we do it with the passion and we do it for you so with that being said i catch you guys on the next one stay safe be blessed and i'll see you around peace